Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts here with a word from Psalms. Uh, this is Psalms chapter 36, starting at verse 1. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. Now listen, verse 2. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Verse 3, the words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has left off to be wise and to do good. He devises mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. He doesn't hate evil. That's my explanation of that. He doesn't hate evil. Kind of likes it. Okay. Verse 5, thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. You know, we don't realize that, we don't realize how serious God is. But this is the thing that makes it so easy for us who do to sin. What makes it so easy is that key word. that there is no fear of God. That is a very dangerous place to be. When you have no fear of God, you call yourself a born-again Christian. You call yourself a believer. But when it comes to righteousness, you have your own set of standards. You don't want to hear what the Bible says because as far as you're concerned, the Bible's too strict. You don't have time for that. God knows your needs. God understands you. He knows your heart. So why can't you get a little piece of tail every once in a while? Why can't you get stinky drunk every once in a while? huh? Why can't you slap your wife around when she gets on your last nerve? Yeah, no big deal, huh? It's okay if, if you lose your temper. God knows you got anger issues. You take your fist and knock her down the stairs. I mean, come on, you know, she shouldn't have gotten on your nerves, right? You don't fear God when you raise your hand to your wife. You don't fear God when you raise your hands to your children. And I'm not talking in discipline. I'm talking abusively. You slap them around and knock them on the ground and then tell them to go get you something just because you, cause you bees the boss. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wow. And you really think God's okay with that. You really think that God likes the way you treat your wife and your children. You really think God's okay with you disrespecting them, dissing them in public, calling them stupid, butthole, all of that. And all the other words, flowery words of hate that you use against them. You really think God is okay with you disrespecting your wife and putting down your kids and telling them they're nothing, they're not worth anything. They should never have been born. And if you had your way, you'd knock them into next summer. You'd knock them into eternity. You wish they were dead. You really think God is okay with that? This is the sad part. Some of you who do that are pastors preachers, singers, ministers of music, musicians in the body of Christ, usher, you usher in the saints and make them feel all welcome and you're so full of hospitality and warmth and oh, you're just glowing with the love of God. But you get home and you put your foot up your wife's behind in a New York minute just because you can. And you think because God isn't putting his foot up your behind, it's okay. Because you be the man. And everybody's supposed to submit to your rule, to your authority. That's not authority. That is cruelty. That's not a godly man. You are the devil's imp. You are the devil's tool 
full of the devil. You're anointed, but you're anointed by the devil. That's not love. That's contempt. That's murder. You'd be better off leaving them. Just leave. Quit doing all that harm. Quit jacking your wife up and messing your kids' minds up. Quit being so abusive. You got problems. You need to go to the altar and ask God for deliverance. Because, baby, you're full of demons. You're not full of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would not allow you to do that. And if the Holy Spirit's been putting a check on you and you don't fear God and you've been doing what you want to do just because you know you're grown, you can do what you want in your own house, then guess what? The Holy Spirit has left you. You're not bothered by what you do. You're not, you're not pricked in your heart by what you say. Those mean, hateful words that can cut even deeper than a, 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 a split lip. And you think it's everybody else's fault. And you tell them so. Look what you made me do. Listen, baby. Nobody made you do a thing. You just have an evil streak. And there is no God in that. And you better watch it. Because you know what happens. You may not get your payday while you're on this earth. You may not get that. But God has something waiting for you in eternity. And all those years of abuse. Those demons will be abusing you throughout eternity over and, oh, and you think abuse, you think you know what abuse is. You think you know how to make somebody's life miserable. Demons know how to make your eternity a living hell. Pain, excruciating pain. See, when God writes you a bill and he knows you can't pay it, you're going to pay through the behind either in this life and or the next. It's prayer time. You need to get counseling. You need to be delivered from demons. Or you need to just leave your family and let them live in peace. They're better off on welfare in a house full of love than to live with you with all the money you provide. It's not worth it. You're not worth it. And I pray that God turns your heart around and pricks your heart. I pray God convicts you right now as you hear this message. You can't treat God's people that way and think it's okay. The other thing God may do to you is expose you right there in the church expose you to the police, expose you all over the place. Because when God pulls you down, baby, you don't. one thing you don't want is for God to demote you in this life. Because I'm telling you, God knows how to sit on you. And you can't get away. You can't run. You can't hide. You got to face the music. And you talk about humiliation. Yeah, you need to pray. You need to repent. You need to leave your family alone until you learn from God what true love acts like, what true love talks like, how true love uh, treats people. True love. Start by reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And pray, pray, pray. You and your family desperately need that.